the general vicinity. Fidget Green Execs, students, I would like to ask you all a question. It's a question that has puzzled the greatest minds of all time. I even ask myself from time to time. And that question is, are you ready for it? What are you having for lunch today? <laughs> a pretty monotonous question, wouldn't you say? But when you think about it, we as humans always think about what we're going to eat. When we're eating, we're thinking about eating, talking about eating. So from an ecological standpoint, what we have is a large portion of our lives that also relates to a carbon footprint. So how is our company, Paul Bar, the treasure company, going to solve the problem of a broken food system? So what is our business concept? Could you change the next slide, please? The business concept is actually um, composed of three components. And so we're going to have a cooking class that is sustainable, our own garden, and also a market. And let's start with the community-based cooking class. The cooking class actually encourages um, people to learn about food waste and how we have, like, in supermarkets, there's a lot of reduced produce. And these products are actually nearing their expiry date, but many people seem to think that this food isn't high quality. But in fact, this food can still be used to um, cook amazing meals. So just to add on that point, expiration dates don't actually come from federally regulated uh, systems that are put in place. They're actually put in place by the large corporations and the food industry. The problem with this is food labels expiration dates with the exception of baby food. They don't necessarily cater to when the, the food is safe to eat, but rather it's for when it's most marketable, how to sustain a competitive field in the marketplace. So how will we start to educate people on uh, this fact? So not only are we using the reduced foods for um, our community-based cooking class, but the garden, play, the garden plays a role into it because this, the waste that we produce from our cooking class kitchen, we will actually use as compost to grow our own garden to produce fresh produce that we can sell in our market to our customers. And that basically um, promotes local buying and also promotes ethical consumerism, also decreasing our ecological footprint. So goals and values and such? So our main goal of our business on like a social level is that we're trying to break the stigma that um, that foods nearing its expiry date is not good anymore. And we're doing that through educating everyone that it could be used and we're going to network with local grocery stores to provide us that reduced produce for our cooking classes. And we're going to connect with local farms to give them um, any food waste as compost. And just in general, we're going to connect with the local community and also schools to promote our business. So a quick question, how much food waste does the average person produce in Canada so per in year? In Canada, per year, each Canadian produces 170 kilograms. And all of this food waste could be used if so we just do how to. Our main idea is to basically create a company that produces as little waste as possible by not only creating no waste, but also reducing the waste of other companies like grocery stores by taking their products that people don't buy and using it for better purpose while educating people that there is more to it than just expired food. Just one thing before we wrap up. So what does Hull Bar stand for, you might be asking? Pretty arbitrary name. It stands for sustain in Swedish because Sweden is the lead Based in recycling. They divide their waste into different sections, and that's why we chose that name for the company. So choose Hallmark, uh, live, love, local markets. Thank you. <laughs> Sit. How we will avoid it?
industry, how will we avoid like this risk consumed by your ones and you're now selling them foods that do have a propensity that have more of a propensity for the consumers to get sick than like all the other companies mm -hmm. in the world? Well, we're not using foods that are expired, but are now closer to their expiry date that maybe stores are putting on sale. So not many people are going to want to buy things that are older or don't look as nice. That's what we would be using. There was actually a, a study published by Harvard, and they said that a lot of people find that food labels, especially on packaged foods, they're very misleading. So we are attempting to educate people on these misleading uh, expiry dates, make them more accurate, and market people uh, at a, a lower income at a lower price of these unwanted food items from our stakeholders. Um, I think I'm a little bit confused on how exactly you're going to be using the food that's closer to the expiry date. Is it just for your classes, or like what other uses are you going to have considering we have so much of it? Um, what are your ways in actually being So first we're going to use it for our cooking class, and um, since there's so many, we're actually going to um, expand our business to that. Alright, so uh, a lot of them, we can teach lower income people, which would technically, uh, or most, most of the time, shop at our store. We would have them learn how to use these halfly expired items, right, to their bed cheaper items that they can buy in the store and use and cook with. So it's um, a cooking class, like a storefront of cooking classes. It's also selling food and it's a garden. Is that my understanding? It's a garden. So our, uh, the food that's wasted from the actual cooking classes, we're going to use as compost for the garden and we're going to sell uh, fresh foods, which we know, of course, is coming from us. This customer is selling, sorry, this customer is selling food apples like almost past their expiry date, so I'm assuming it's not your own because like that's completely separate. But because in a lot of like, um, for a lot of stores, we don't sell food that's like halfway near your expiry date, much like cheaper than food that is near your expiry date, wouldn't you necessarily be more expensive than them as well? I don't, I don't think I understand your question. Um, because you're, because I'm assuming you're buying like these like goods that are happy through your expiry date from like local stores, and because they don't, and because most of these stores don't have most of their goods, they're the same price as like goods that are really far from your expiry date. So wouldn't it be necessarily more expensive in these other stores if you have, like make any profit at all? So I, I think you misunderstood. We're not taking items that are halfway through their expiry date. They're either nearing their expiry date or they're already past it. There is research out there to justify having certain food items uh, in stock that pass their expiry date. They're still safe to eat, safe to prepare with, and safe to use. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, how would this like affect your consumers, like from like a health standpoint? Like, do like, you think there'd be like potential, like I don't know, like say if people get sick, like would that get you guys in trouble? Or once again, we're teaming up with a lot of research industries. Already, research being done about certain foods that can be used after their expiry date. Milk is an example. Although it tastes terrible when it's spoiled, it's actually pasteurized, so it's safe to drink. All right, that's all for this group. Round of applause.